Hey everyone, this is Harlan, and this has got to be one of the most unusual titles for a video I've ever done. There's a reason for doing this, and I'm going to show it to you later on. This video is about supersites, and I have a little, it's not a disclaimer, but I just want to let you know, because of the site that we're reviewing, it discusses adult material. It also alludes to explicit pictures that are on the site. This is an educational video about the success of the website. If you are the type of person who's going to be easily offended, then you might want to skip this video. Uh, don't call your kids over and show it to them. Uh, the video is not for minors. It is only for people who want to understand what's going on these days online. And I'm using a very particular site as an example. So you've been warned, proceed after this point at your own risk. I promise you won't hurt, but I just want to let the people know who will save them from sending me an email. Dear Harlan, how could you possibly use that as an example? You're a disgusting person. Okay, whatever, here we go. The site that we're gonna be looking at is elephantjournal.com. And we're gonna see how this site has become a market leader in the yoga meditation community. And it's a large community. There's huge traffic to the site day in and day out. Um, I think you're going to learn something about what goes on. So meet Waylon Lewis. Waylon is, we'll call him the head elephant. He's the head of Elephant Journal, and he is a, they call him a Dharma bum. He was a Buddhist, uh, raised, uh, raised Buddhist, and he's very concerned with green lifestyle and ecology. At one point, Elephant Journal was a print uh, magazine slash uh, a newsletter um, thing, and he decided to move it online. So he already had a small following, not a huge following, and it was local, and he decided to go national or international. Waylon contributes some of the articles. He especially is involved with the more well-known articles. And this site has made him a little bit of a celebrity. And he likes to tease that model of celebrity. There were articles about, you know, announcing April Fool's I think he was announcing his engagement and stuff like that. Um, he considers himself one of the most eligible bachelors in the yoga, green living, meditation community. Okay, so there's our head cheese. And the site is a crowded layout and things rotate. And it shows you popular articles, what's popular by views. Let's look up at the top and you see the lot of lot of categories. Echo fashion, equal rights, bike, children, reviews, videos, inspiring, animal rights, controversial, funny, sexy, cities, conscious consumerism, adventure, and Spanish. Okay, now on the left, this is only part of the page. You can go check it out at elephantjournal.com. Um, there are those advertisements, and I believe that they rotate. Okay, um, and you see that they're aimed at the uh, community that he's reaching. Uh, popular, to, so there are articles that are available today only to get people to encourage people to read them. Then articles that are popular late, lately, and then he goes down and, and shows you some regular content. <coughs> he tracks very carefully what people are interested in. So you could see on the day that um, I filmed this, the most popular article was Eight Ways to Get the Girl or Guy of Your Dreams. That had 943 views. Popular lady lately was, the most popular was Obama's tweet one minute after the election was called, which had 
over 4,000 views. Then the next one in the middle, 21 uh, uh, tips for uh, dragging your sleepy ass out of bed to practice yoga. Okay, <clears throat> so you can see a lot of this was election related, but generally there isn't a lot of politics on the site. It's something that's done in passing. Now, Elephant Journal is all of the following. It is filled with content. There are just thousands and thousands of articles on Elephant Journal. The articles are interesting. Uh, it's very easy to get articles up on Elephant Journal because they really want content. So there are lots and lots of interesting articles there every single day. Elephant Journal is sexy. A lot of their articles are dealing with sex, dealing with attraction, dealing with dating, because they know their model. Elephant Journal is controversial. If there is an incident of controversy or something that they can push to the end, they'll go after it because he knows that they're going to get a lot of readership from it. Now, what Whalen wants is not just people to read the article, but his whole traffic formula, as we're going to see, is related to getting articles going viral. Okay, now, next. It's filled, we, why are we going backwards? They define their niche. So they know what their niche is interested in, but they also expand it uh, based on what uh, Waylon knows about his niche. He is the niche, so he adds things um, that he thinks his, his group is going to be interested in. By the way, did I mention that they're sexy? There are a lot of articles about sex, and they are the ones that get the most views, <clears throat> they are the ones that get the most comments, and they are the ones that get the most shares. Uh, note that that's been mentioned twice. It's crowded with content. The layout of the site does not allow for a lot of white space. I know that there are graphic designers who look at the site in horror and say, what is he doing? What is he thinking about? And yet, it's working because people are coming for the content. Um, for someone who's a Buddhist, the site is not very zen. It's, it's kind of overwhelming with content. It's very heavy on the ads on the left-hand side. Um, and you see people are advertising again and again. So they're obviously getting a response for their money, and, and that's how he's making money. He posts the views, and also on the left-hand side, we're going to see he posts the most popular articles, which in fact encourages people to go read the most popular articles. He's really going for comments. They encourage comments and comments on the comments. And anyone who's an author of an article on Elephant Journal has to be available to respond to comments. Because when you post something and someone does a comment and you ignore the comment, it discourages people from posting again. So if you have authored a article on Yoga Journal, on Elephant Journal, I'm sorry, then you need to be responsible for posting the comments and responding to them as well. By the way, did I mention that it's sexy? You'll see. Okay, so let's explore further. So he has on the left-hand column three types of art, three groups. One is popular lately, popular this week, and popular all time. And you can tell by the views. They're sorted. Popular lately? Well, uh, your ugly vagina is normal and gorgeous, and it's marked adult. In the week, it's gotten about, um, uh, that, that's only the last couple of days. Okay, then the Obama tweet, and so forth. You can see what they are. You can see that out of these, one, two, three um, are politics related because of the election week. Now, popular this week, well, here we go. Um, there are only two that were popular because, you know, this was before the election. So, um, vagina number one, more sex with more people, the good, the bad, and the ugly of ocean open relationships, and that's it. Now, popular of all time, 
First, skip your morning meditation and watch this instead. It's got almost a half a million views. Someone asked the Dalai Lama what surprises him most. Uh, this was his response, and it is a picture with a quote of the Dalai Lama. Uh, why lying broken on a pile in your bedroom floor is a good idea. 217,000. Eight things I learned from 50 naked people. 162,000. Rock star. Yoga fan man Adam uh, Levine of Maroon 5 gets sexy for prostate and testicular cancer prevention. 157,000 views. And by the way, if you go and you look at the picture there, it's in the small form, you can't really tell what's going on. It looks, oh, it might be a nude picture, but when you go there, you see it's done very creatively. And here, um, your ugly vagina is normal and gorgeous. And you can just see that was a hugely popular article. So, again, sex is a there of the most popular articles. Um, one, two, three of the most popular articles were sex-related. So Waylon knows that sex sells. Here's that article, Your Ugly Vagina is Normal and Gorgeous. Got a huge number of shares, huge number of comments, and it's aimed at the article and making people feel good about their genitals. Apparently there's a huge number of people who um, believe that their genitals look ugly and they discuss the things that they can do about it. Waylon also knows that controversy sells. Now meet John Friend. John Friend was the head of Anusara Yoga. He was easily one of the most popular yoga teachers of our time. When he went to a conference, thousands of people would show up. And here you see him walking through a place where he's teaching, and they're packed in like sardines, uh, and he's teaching, and people loved him. Well, the New York Times focused on John Friend and talked about his popularity, and especially his popularity with women. They reported that at yoga conferences, he would be mobbed by women, and they would be uh, pushing their hotel keys into his hand uh, with an open invitation for, um, John, you can come up and visit me and, and practice yoga positions with me privately in the bedroom. Um, and when the New York Times did that, um, there was absolute outrage, and the Anusara community came forward and said, it's not true, they made it up, it doesn't happen, he's a saint. Well, it turned out that he wasn't much of a saint. It turned out that John was actually uh, running a Wicca pagan sex cult within the yoga community, and he had org organized, uh, while he was engaged, he had organized a group of people uh, with whom he regularly practiced sex and told them that uh, by having sex with him they were saving the world, uh, realigning the energy of the world, and so forth. Uh, when this broke, the Anusara community once again rounded up the bandwagons and said none of this is true and none of this is true. And then as people began to explore it, they found out that it was in fact true. And the leaders of the Anusara community um, started dropping out. They started writing articles on Elephant Journal. And then um, Whalen got a huge scoop. He reached out to John Friend himself and had a series of articles and interviews with him in which John basically indicated that he was purer than the driven snow. And then there were a series of articles which um, revealed that uh, his driven snow uh, meant that uh, muddy cars had driven over it and left imprints. Um, he was basically lying, avoiding the truth, and Yoga Journal, Elephant Journal, to its credit, uh, went after him. His readership soared. Why? Because it was controversy, 
and Waylon knows that people love a good controversy. Now, Waylon's not the only one who likes controversy and sex and knows that it sells. Here's the Huffington Post. Okay, now here, remember, they're trying to portray themselves as a uh, respectable news media, but they're following the history of news media. People don't always know this. The British media is very explicit with pictures. Uh, look at just what happened in France with the uh, naked pictures of uh, um, the prince and, 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 and his wife. But here's the Huffington Post, and I avoided the picture here, but Miley Cyrus flashes side boob, talks sex scenes, and losing her virginity. And a huge 1,150 people commented. And that's, that's a very large number. Very often, um, she'll put this stuff on the front page of the Huffington Post because she knows that it gets a lot of attention. So newspapers, online newspapers, offline newspapers know that sex, controversy, and celebrity all sell. So where does all of the content come from, okay? How does somebody who is busy practicing yoga, meditation, and recycling get all of this content? So first of all, people want to write for Elephant Journal because their stuff is going to be seen. It gets their name out in public, and even though everybody in the yoga community is humble and giving and doesn't care about celebrity, it gets their name out in public. It also gets traffic to their site. I know a number of people in my programs have suggested that they write and submit to Elephant Journal. Elephant Journal took their content, uh, jazzed up the headline, put it up there, and they got traffic to their site. So Waylon gets lots and lots of free content. He's not paying these people for writing. They're submitting articles because they want to be out there. They want to be known. Most writers are not paid. If you check one of the articles on the site down at the bottom, if you really like the article, you can use PayPal and give a tip to the writer. Now, I'm sure that doesn't come to a huge amount of money, uh, but it's out there. Personally, I've read lots of articles. I never even thought to tip a writer for their, their article. So I'm not sure what kind of a model that is or whether they make much of it or anything at all. Um, now, Huffington Post started in a similar way, that people wanted to be on the Huffington Post, and it offered a lot of people blogging rights if they would blog about their political or whatever um, information that they wanted to get out there. And if, interestingly, uh, today, people would die to get their blogs or information up on the Huffington Post. It's very hard to get up there today. But a lot of bloggers also were very upset because being unpaid when Ariana sold the Huffington Post for $315 million, they thought that they should get a piece of the pie, and they didn't. Um, they sued, but um, I don't think that that suit went anywhere. I don't see that they had any rights to any piece of the money. Uh, most of them got mad, but they still continued writing because it was a source of traffic and getting themselves known. So how does Wayland get traffic, okay? Now, we have people saying that SEO, SEO, you've got to optimize your site, you've got to optimize your site. Okay, so here we have some statistics um, that Alexa has tracked for us. It's very nice of her, thank you, Alexa. And you see on the right, we're highlighted on search percent. Estimated percent of people that come from a search engine. Let's say they came from Google, Bing, or what have you. And you see that in the past week, it was about 13%, but historically, about 10% came from search engines. Let me translate that to you. It means that 90% of his traffic comes from 
two other ways. Number one, it comes from social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, or because it's a destination site, people are going to Yo uh, Elephant Journal because they know that there's interesting content there, and that's where they choose to find out about things going on in the world. Well, is Waylon different? Is there a lot of traffic coming to major sites from search? So I took a look at Huffington Post. Now, I did this day after election day, so there was a lot of people coming from search. Look at a lot. A lot was 15%. 85% of the people coming are coming to the Huffington Post either from social media or they're coming because it's their destination and that's where they get news. S historically, in the past three months, it's about 12% coming from search. That's ridiculously small. Okay, 88% of the people that regularly come to the Huffington Post are not caring about what Google says. Are, are you seeing a pattern here that SEO doesn't matter that much anymore? Yeah, there's an SEO now, and you can still do SEO on your sites. But if you're looking ahead to the future, what you need to do is you need to move to a different model because this model, the era of SEO, is coming to an end. So here's the new traffic model, and this is what Wayland does. You get great content, and you get a super catchy headline. We've seen that a few times. You can explore the site, and you'll see that he does it. Then, social sharing. So, Elephant Journal is on Twitter. Um, he's on Facebook. I haven't seen it on LinkedIn. Um, but also, this is where people want to share their content. Reddit, BuzzFeed. And they want to share it to passionate followers. And what that does is produce steady traffic to your site and the traffic on Elephant Journal is huge is a very heavily traffic site now what they do is that Elephant Journal and other savvy site owners they build multiple site and Facebook lists to tap into the most passionate market segments so if you go to subscribe via email to Huffington Post it asks you, well, what do you want to know about? Like, you obviously don't want to know about everything that's happening under the sun, so you get to indicate what you are interested in. So, for example, if you have a sports site, such as Bleacher Report, which we've already discussed, they'll email you every day, but they say, yes, but which email topics, which teams are you interested in? And since they know lo your location, they suggest here are all the teams in your area and you can modify them. So in Florida, they said, you know, Miami Heat, Miami Dolphins. Are you also interested in Tampa? Are you interested in Orlando? And they listed those and you get to delete the ones that you're not. Being a New Yorker, I added the New York Yankees as well. Um, so bottom line is it's a matter of knowing who your lists are and allowing them to select what they are interested in. And this is part of the new traffic model. So here's something unusual that Waylon does. You'll see it on a couple of sites. It's starting to happen more and more. Content on Elephant Journal is free until something happens. You click on three articles. You read three articles. You like three articles. You don't like three articles. Whatever it is. But the next thing that happens when you click on another um, article, you get, oh, well, um, th that was your limit for the day. If you'd like to read unlimited articles on Elephant Journal, give us a dollar a month. And for a dollar a month, it's a pretty low thing, he get, you get unlimited articles. Okay. Otherwise, come back tomorrow and you can see another three. Does it work? I don't know. But there are lots of sites going to this model. The New York Times has something um, similar. Uh, my local paper in Florida, the Sun Sentinel, I just clicked on a couple of articles the other day and it went, uh, 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 you're at your limit. Want to subscribe? And frankly, I don't go there very often, so I chose not to subscribe. So 
he locks the content for you for a day so you subscribe for a dollar a month and they put a cookie on your site so that they know when you got there um, and you either subscribe or you don't. All right, so this is not just Waylon doing it, but he's showing that his content has value. So, changing times require change. This is a new model that's been going on for a while, but finally, the model can come down into the hands of regular people and not just leave it in the hands of these huge super sites. Now you can get on something uh, and be an early adopter, okay, be build your own super site. It's not impossible, okay? The same model that Ariana Huffington, uh, Ariana Huffington did for the Huffington Post this is a similar model to what the people at Bleacher Report did. It's a similar model to what Wayland did. And I know other sites that are doing the same thing. So you can be an early adopter of this model, or you can be a late adopter, and it's going to be much harder uh, to put this model into play. It's not a risky strategy when you see the success models all doing it. You know, we've been seeing that Google does things and Google changes things and that Google updates. But one thing that is a constant in Google is that it wants fresh content. And that's not going to change. And if you give Google content, then um, it will make you an authority site. So if you're not on the list yet, get on the list. Head over to supersiteformula.com, get on the list, and I will keep you posted about what's happening in the world of super sites and whether there's a super site in your future. This is Harlan Kilstein. Thanks so much for joining me.